So for this video today, we're going to be looking at the basics of derivatives, what they are, and their significance to the topic of calculus. So the basic definition of a derivative is the instantaneous rate of change of a function with respect to another variable. So this may seem a little confusing at first, but just know that a derivative is the same as finding the slope of a tangent line to the function at a single point. Derivatives will help us identify the tangent of any point on the line, which can allow us to understand the behavior of the graph and how the slopes of the ten tangential line change as the x value changes. Finding the behavior of graphs is essentially what calculus is all about. So to get a basic understanding of what derivatives are, let's start off with an example. So here I have a line, which is y is equal to x squared. So this is a parabolic equation. So now from this line, I'm going to choose three random points just for demonstration purposes. So let's do it where x is equal to 0, 2, and 3. Now, on each of these points, let's find out what the slope of the tangential line is. So the tangent line, or the tangent, is a straight line that just touches the curve of that point. So for example, if we create a tangent line at x equals 0, we can see that we would have to draw a horizontal line. So it would just touch the line at where the point is x is equal to 0, which would show that um, it would be touching, just touching the point at 0, 0. So what is the slope of this horizontal line? Well, the slope of any horizontal line will be 0. So now that we have that recorded, uh, we will create a tangent line on the graph at now at x is equal to 2. So this would be at the coordinate point 2, 4 in this case. Notice that this tangent line is a positive slope when the tangent line at x is equal to 0 is just 0. So that means that there is an increase of the tangent, like tangent line or the slope of the tangent line from x is 0 to x equals 1. So this pattern will can actually continue as we go on to uh, x equals 3. As you can see that when you go to x equals 3, which in this case is at the coordinate point 3, 9 because of the y is equal to x squared equation, that this tangent line is even steeper, which means the slope would be even greater than when it was at x equals 2. Now, with imagine like we have all of these different slopes recorded. Now, let's say we recorded all of the values of the slopes of the tangent line. What does this have to do with derivatives? Well, the derivative would basically be a line that consists of the x values being the points that we chose the record, which would be 0, 2, and 3. And the y value would be the slope of each tangent line at those values. And with those values, you can make up a line with those uh, points, and that's basically what the derivative of a y is equal to x squared graph would be. So now we're going to get into the basics of how we can easily find that through uh, different methods. So now that we have a basic understanding of what derivatives are, we can go over one of the many rules that are used. So the rule, first rule that we're going to talk about today is the power rule. So the power rule basically makes it so that if you have a function raised to a power, it will help you find the derivative of that function. So for example, we have y equals x squared. So in this function right here, we have x squared. So the first step you want to do is take the exponent and multiply it by the coefficient. So in this case, the coefficient of x is 1. So you get y equals 2x squared. So now that we uh, multiplied our exponent, we will subtract our exponent by 1. And that will give us the final answer of 2x. 
So when you have the power rule, you're basically just uh, multiplying the coefficient and then subtracting the exponent. And that's the basic idea of the power rule. Okay, so remembering the basic function of the power rule. So for power, we have d over dx, right, of x to the n, and this equals n x to the n minus 1. This is the basic formula, basic formula for the power rule that we're going to continuously be using um, throughout calculus, right? It's for derivatives. This is the power rule, so power. Now that we know that, let's go through some examples. So let's start with the simple one. If we have, if we want to find the derivative, the derivative of x to the 3, so we'll do something simple like that, right? So in this case, n is equal to 3, right? x to the n, so x to the 3, n equals 3, so we'll just write that, n equals 3. So what does this equal? nx, so n is 3, we got 3x to the n minus 1, so that's 3 minus 1. So that's 3x to the 2. And that's our answer. So say we, let's do another example, a simple one. If we want to find the derivative of, say, uh, 8, or, okay, the derivative of x to the 8, right? In this case, if we, if we want to find the derivative of x to the 8, in this case, you can just pause the video and try it yourself, uh, and then come back for the solution. But, okay, if we want to solve this, in this case, n is equal to 8, right? And then we have the answer as nx, so 8x to the n minus 1. 8 minus 1 equals 7. So we have 8x to the 7, and that's our answer. Now, let's go through some harder examples. So, say we want to do find the derivative so d over dx of x to the minus 5, so a negative number. In this case, all we have to do is set n equal to negative 5, right, as before. And then we solve as normal. So we have minus 5x. And here, what? And here is meant to be n minus 1. So what is n minus 1? Minus 5, right? Minus 5 minus 1. What does that equal? That equals minus 6. So we have minus 5 and to the n minus 1, minus 5 minus 1 is minus 6. And that is our answer. We have minus 5x to the minus 6. Now let's try one more example. Right, say so we have one find derivative of something like a square root of x. You know, basic example. Um, in this case, one thing that we have to know is that the square root of x can be rewritten as x to the one half. That's just a rule in, in math, right? So the square root, because it's being, it's the square root, which means the second root of x, you can write as one over two, right? So then knowing this, we can write x to the, the square root of x as x to the one half. So we got dy over dx of x to the half, right? And then just follow the rule. So in this case, n equals 1 over 2, right? So this is 1 over 2x and n minus 1. So what is 1 over 2 minus 1? This is going to be negative 1 over 2 or negative half, right? If you do a half minus 1, that's going to be negative half. Negative 1 over 2 or, or my bad, negative 0 0.5. So it would be half x to the negative 1 over 2. All right, and then this bit. So this is our answer. But we always want to simplify it to make it um, to make it in, in a, a more easier to read form. So what we can do is <clears throat> this is basically equal to 1x to the minus 1, 1 half. So minus 1 half over 2. That's what it's basically equal to. We can take that and rewrite it again. So we can do... Um, x to the minus half, that we bring that down, right, because it's negative. So it would just be 1 over, and we have the 2 below, so 2. And since we're bringing x to the half below, we can do 2x to the 1 over 2. But this, while x to the 1 over 2 is good for calculations, it's not the best for readability, and it's not the proper notation, so we just want to change that back. So we got 1 over 2, and we got square root x. 
And this is our final answer. This is the derivative of um, the square root of x.